It was a court case that shocked the nation. It involved a young woman new to this country and her crime of passion. It raised questions about the rights of women and the poor and the use of the death penalty. And it happened over 100 years ago. In a book called The Trials of Maria Barbella, Adana Pucci tells the story of the first woman sentenced to die in the electric chair in this country and of the wealthy countess who came to her aid. Adana Pucci is the great-granddaughter of the Countess de Braza and conducted years of research to learn the details of this story. And I am pleased to have her here to tell us what she found. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Uh, how did you get interested in this? Well, first of all, I was, I'm a Florentine. Yes. But I happen to have an American great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I was very interested in my American roots. And so I started this journey in reverse of what most people, well, here in America do when they go to Europe and find their roots or in Africa. And I, I discovered this uh, incredible woman and I, who is my ancestor. And yeah. as uh, I was discovering about her life, I became uh, every day more proud of being her, 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 her great-granddaughter. Her great-granddaughter. Yeah. And, um, and the story came about. I discovered what she had done. She was an activist. Let me pick it up to here because it is such a fascinating story. Maria Barbella, and you help me, but I mean, it's a great story. She uh, lived in Little Italy. Yes. And in a moment of passion and rage against her abuser abuser she slashed his throat uh, and then cleaned up and conveniently waited for the police to come and arrest her and she was put in jail mm -hmm. and was to go on trial and was to risk going to the electric chair so petrified that she wouldn't even sit in the chair in her cell in italy was your great Grandmother. Yes. Countess Cora Slocum. She married Count de Brazza, de Brazza from the family of explorers to Africa, Brazzaville. Yes. The city of Brazzaville and, was and named. So after. she moved from New Orleans over yes. to Florence. Rome. She was north of Venice, north actually. Of Venice. And she finds out about this story and gets but she was a an interesting woman of her own right, you Absolutely. know. Activist, uh, cared about human rights and cared about things. Uh, very much in a sense like, I assume you identify with her somewhat, don't you? Well, I don't have the courage that she has, <laughs> probably. Yeah. But uh, she would be ahead of time even today because uh, a woman of that society um, today is not seen visiting people on death row. And, uh, um, and I think Cora was would be extraordinary even now. Um, uh, well, I know, I know I don't identify, identify with her. Um, but you'd look at her with great admiration. A great admiration. But, but in a sense, you left Florence to come and explore, Florence. and you live in Bali, and you live here, and you made documentaries, and yes. you wanted to reflect on the culture. Cora, your great-grandmother. You were named after your grandmother, who was Adana, right? Yes. Okay, so you, she, Cora comes here to the United States because of this case. She gets interested, she reads about it, she comes over here, and she rallies support on behalf of Maria Barbella. And what does she do to get her acquitted? Well, she was moved by great ideals. And uh, in that sense, I identify with her because I am also moved by great ideals. And uh, she, um, she started, uh, well, she, she hired the best criminal lawyers in the city and started the first campaign against the death penalty nationwide in order not to get the girl uh, saved but to get a new trial so that she would be tried fairly because the first trial had been um, three days the girl couldn't understand a word of English and um, she was of course Italian and Italians at that time uh, were the lowest of the lowest of society and so there was a great discrimination against them. And uh, so Cora, um, you know, after about a year, um, there were petitions from all over the country that reached Governor Morton of New York. 
And so, well, first of all, this girl was also the first woman in Sing Sing, and not only in, on death row, but in Sing Sing. And um, after a year and a half, um, uh, she got the appeal granted. And so she, there was the second trial. And here, she was transformed um, uh, from an illiterate peasant. Uh, she had become, she had learned manners, and she had learned English. Mm. So she defended herself um, in the second trial. And so then she's acquitted. And then I want to take what happens to these characters. Yes. First, Maria Barbella. She, does she marry? She marries. She and then, marries. And, and ostensibly she married a man who needed her to establish citizenship or get into exactly. this country. And then yes. he, and then what happens to her? Well, she uh, disappears. I, I suddenly after like six years of research, I said enough. Yeah. I know that there are probably some relatives somewhere in Queens, but um, I haven't uh, been able to communicate with them. Um, she had a son. She had a son, and um, that's about the only character in the entire book that I haven't been able to find the, the complete story. Yeah. What happened to Cora? Cora, um, uh, as Maria Barbella came out of prison, Cora, in a sense, um, went into a prison. Not the same kind of prison, but at 44 years old, she, um, she lost it. She, she had a mental breakdown of some she kind. She had a mental breakdown and never really recovered from it. And it happened instantly, did it almost? It ca happened overnight. Overnight. And we don't know what it was. Probably it was some disease that now would be uh, easy to know. But then, no. And anyway, she lived uh, all her life um, in, a, in a kind of solitude, yes. Yeah. And, um, but the first 44 years, she did more than what normally a person does in, in a whole lifetime. So, um, you know, she was a mover of, uh, of mountains. And uh, this story is really about arms that reach across the great social divide. And um, she was alone. She was capable to change a situation, to be a catalyst, a situation, and begin um, the awareness about the issues of the death penalty in this country. The Trials of Maria Barbella, Adana Pucci. Thank you very much. Thank Pleasure. you, Charlie. Thank you very much. We thank you for joining us this evening. My thanks also to Dick Carmi and to Clarence Page. We'll see you tomorrow night, including on our broadcast last tomorrow night. There's a fantastic exhibition at the Guggenheim Museum about abstract art. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll talk about abstract art and Charles Durning here in Inherit the Wind with George C. Scott. See you tomorrow night.